Hi, my name is Joel Peters, and today I'm going to be presenting Broken Records magazine. To start off, we were given a brief. Uh, in the brief, I've been, I was asked by the London magazine to pitch my ideas for producing a new online and print-based music magazine for North London. The objective. The objective for this magazine is to be one of the most successful North London rock magazines on the market. Broken Records is intended to be a magazine that features the latest music, music events, gigs and more. But what is Broken Records? Broken Records is a North London music magazine keeping up to date on the hottest topics in the rock world. It will include, it will include interviews from artists and bands in the rock scene and inform the consumers on upcoming events and conventions. But why Broken Records? As a traditional magazine, we want to include everyone within the community. So with rock, it's an everlasting um, genre of music, therefore we want to include new listeners and old listeners. And with the older listeners, they may have records, original records, but they might be broken because of the time, and therefore we want to collate both communities. The genre. The genre of the magazine is going to be rock. Uh, from intense research, I found that the ageing population in London is rapidly growing. With this in mind, creating a magazine for this vast amount of people will be successful and sell well within North London. In addition, rock, unlike other genres, is timeless and loved by all generations and genders. So by making the, so by making the magazine this genre, it will allow a large following and fan base of our product. The target audience. Who is the target audience? We have a primary target audience of 30 to 45 year olds, both men and women who have a passion for rock music within the North London music scene. In the time of the 80s, rock, was, rock music was its prime, and people of this age would have been able to appreciate the music first hand and therefore take a huge interest in the magazine. And our secondary target audience is anyone who has a passion for rock and roll music. Market placement. Where do we stand in the market among our competitors? We are, from, from my research, I've seen that we're setting up in a saturated market for the rock and roll genre. There are many successful magazines that already exist, such as Mojo, Planet Rock, UK Rock and Roll and Classic Rock. But why will we succeed? Our USP is that we cover the most in-depth information within the North London music scene. This is something our competitors don't necessarily do, as they're more generic and broad when documenting the rock scene. In addition, we will help promote upcoming artists and bands in order for them to expand their following. Doing this can, can both promote our product, as they'll bring their fans to us, and themselves as we'll bring our fans to them. The fonts. Fonts for the headline. So, here are two fonts that I've decided to shortlist to possibly use on the front cover. Um, they've been chosen because they have uh, rock connotations to them. The letters have sharp edges, which is, a f which is a font that's used heavily in the rock and roll and rock in general uh, community. If you go to the kind of areas that it's very popular, you'll see this font a lot. And um, it's, it's really recognisable, so when you see it on shelves, you're going to know it's our product. So, broken... So that's for... Metal as in heavy, the uh, second uh, font that I've decided to shortlist, uh, it's, really, it's really strong oriented, oriented font. Unlike rock out font in red, uh, metal as in heavy has sharper edges, it's less curved, um, and, and it has more straight lines making it original and recognisable, which is also why it's been shortlisted for the front cover. Fonts for the body copy. Here are samples of fonts that I've put into the shortlist for the use of the copy of the magazine. Um, I've chosen the, you could say the most generic fonts, but they're also some of, they're the most popular fonts. Um, they've been chosen uh, for the copy of the magazine as they're mature fonts. My, my um, target audience is 30 to 45 year olds, and therefore I want to choose a font that, that, that creates a sophisticated feel. And using these fonts communicates to the customers that we're a serious magazine. Using fonts such as Comic Sans wouldn't be used as they're used for children magazines and comic books, which is something we're not creating. A mood board. Here I've created a mood board. But what is the purpose of it? 
I've created this mood board to give you a flavour and the style of the tone of the ma and attitude of the magazine that I'm creating. Shown here are some of the most famous and influential rock bands and artists that have helped shape our magazine. Shown here are ACDC, Guns N' Roses, Bon Jovi, U2, Queen and more. Uh, also we have featured uh, our competitors, some of our competitors, front covers so we get a feel of what we want to produce but we're obviously going to produce it in higher quality. Marketing distribution. How will people find out about Broken Records magazine? With the increased use of technology, digital and social media use will be key in, to driving awareness. Using platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and Snapchat will be primarily used to promote the magazine. By building up our following on these platforms, our products can be found out by more people. We can communicate when the first edition is coming out and provide sneak peeks into upcoming interviews and more. Encouraging people to share the marketing material will also increase our awareness and provide a recommendation factor. <coughs> the price. Our pricing approach to this magazine is going to be 4 99 which is similar to our competition. It's going to be printed on premium high gloss paper, 130 pages, 65 sheets. And, it's, and there will be a discounted subscription at £45 for 12 issues, which is a 25% saving. However, this is £8 more expensive than our, than our competitors' mojo. <coughs> However, our, the quality of our paper is going to be better than ours. Moving on to resolving legal and ethical issues. Uh, the images that I'll, be, that I'll be using are going to be original for broken records and not from photographers off the internet. They will be of the highest quality and not infringe copyright laws or any ethical issues. In addition, the copy used for the double page spread and other articles will also be original commissioned content. Nothing will be plagiarised from other articles, therefore keeping us within legal boundaries and upholding our editorial reputation. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, that's a really comprehensive one. Mm. She's excellent. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, is it all about dead people? <laughs> no. Okay. It's not all about dead people. So within so what's very in at the moment, fashionable, in yeah. North London, there's going to be I don't know the exact name for it, it's gone out of my head. But there's people that not imitate, I can't think of like the word. Tribute act. Tribute act, thank right, you. Okay. So tribute acts that, and they'll be performing in and obviously I mentioned that we'll be providing information on events. There's there's gonna be a lot of that um, in the magazine that Do you know what? Mentioning. That's a brilliant idea on its own. Using tribute, tribute acts around really North London, then that that's is a super USP. But that's that's stronger than what is current. What you've currently got, which is kind of this loads of these massive names, while saying that you were also going to do latest music events and gigs for North London. But actually, there's nothing North London no. in here. No. But if you were to look at, and there are loads of them, you're that's absolutely right. Tribute acts are the big big groups interview them. That's really cool. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I think it's really that is a, I mean, sort of, you know, looking at that and sort of thinking, oh, how London is that? Um, mm. It's really not London at all, is it? When David Bowie lived here for a bit, and I think he comes from London, or came from London. But apart from that, every single artist on there is... London, aren't they? Yeah. Admittedly, that is a very early mock-up. That's yeah. fine. Probably Absolutely I think it fine. might have been the first or the second. Yeah. But that was just to give myself a feel of what it's gonna, what yeah. the layout's gonna be like. As you can see in the top left-hand corner, yeah, and I think you know, the fact that it's yeah, layout-wise, I think the fact that it's been well annotated as well yeah. is is really strong. That was just for myself and of course for you. Yeah. But it it will definitely be changed, and I'll definitely can yeah. will consider using the yeah. tribute act. Because then also, you can have interesting interviews as well. Because exactly. you do the people behind those tribute acts as opposed Completely. to. I mean, how many, it as well. Yeah, how many interviews have we seen with Jay Z and then they go, when it, like, it, that's just rehashing something. Whereas well, finding out who the people are behind the tributes. Yeah, is really cool. And they are big. Mm. The tribute acts are big. I mean, you're looking yeah. back at all the sort of the music press now, and they're, they're, they're advertising alongside the, the actual acts. I mean, the ones that they're built, uh, mm. they're off, but you know, the, the adverts are big as if it was just a proper band, you know, a yeah. real kind of unique band that do their own material. If you wanted to do this, thing. 
properly. I have a friend who's a producer. He's producing. Um, he did the One Direction tributes, and he's now doing the Spice Girls ones. He, he writes them and produces them. I think it's called Spice World or something like that. Um, if you wanted to interview him, I bet he'd let you interview him, and you could you have you, you could have his photos as well because he's got loads of promo photos, and he would he'd be happy to do that. I mean, I think it's, you know you have properly stumbled on something that's been that could be really good. Yeah. And it's totally unique. There was anything like that before. No. Fantastic. And a lot Very of people cool. love that. They really enjoy so going out to see those like tribute acts, yeah. you know, all over the place. Yeah. So I've seen it's really recently popular. people are travelling all from up yeah. and down yeah, the country to come and see. Well, they're fantastic. Yeah. Which yeah. is why I know that my magazine from, uh, as I said, the marketing distribution, if I know people come from up and down the country. If we get it out there, they'll come to us. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it could be really very, very strong. Of course, so if you gave me the opportunity, yeah, to it, totally. I definitely would. I'll ask my name that. I mean, I've got very little to actually say. I mean, that was the main thing. I think that was the big thing. It was like how how much it's focusing on huge classic rock acts. Really big, really well established. Some of them are probably you know pushing their pensions, and maybe it gets smaller. But that tribute thing, fantastic idea. Um, Yeah, that's really exciting. I think the rationale that you had for everything else was pretty cool. You know. You, you explained everything yeah. in a very clear way, mm. and that's really positive. Mm. And, um, yeah. Well done, Joel. Thank you. Oh.